Scorpio South Node being ruled by Pluto is paying attention to the crises in our lives, right? The adversities and pain, you know, the Plutonic energy of, of the Scorpionic energy, the Plutonic energy going into sort of those underworlds is like, why do, does it feel hellish? Why does it feel so challenging? So we're facing, you know, these crises and instead of being kind of placated by an outer solution that just comes in to kind of save the day. It's like, we're really having to face this, the discomfort. And the South node is something that we're moving from in order to integrate the North node. The North node is where we need to put our attention, right? So if we're moving from South node Scorpio to North node Taurus, and that's been what the nodal axis has been, it's been sort of this death of what we thought reality was, where our self-worth was attached to this sort of system and authority and letting ourselves reflect upon that plutonic energy that this crisis of this pandemic has pushed everybody in front of, like, where are we kind of rebirthing into a new sense of self? And that Uranus energy in Taurus has really helped us to get those activations of or get that um, connection with like our, 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 you know, you know, true self. Now, is everybody answering to that? Is everybody following through? No, but those that are, you know, are really just setting themselves, you know, free in many ways. And, and the hard thing is just watching those that you love avoid these greater initiations and go for the more inverted, weaponized version of it coming through the psyops and the social engineering so what is it teaching us what does it wish to express and reveal when we start to go into that place of you know crisis okay well in crisis we want to act up and 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 find solutions but if we're not doing it from a place of clarity if we're not doing it from a place of our own truth and sovereignty then we are not really maybe making choices that can create the change that we want to see in our lives we have emotions that come up and in order to move the energy and create flow um you know we need to allow that purification so there's sort of a mourning period when pluto hits you know here's kind of the crisis like facing fears of death facing the fear of losing loved ones um seeing just the future trajectory not looking so bright um, you know, there's sort of a mourning process, but really what we're mourning is letting go of the old paradigm and, and, and this relationship with a false partner or authority. And most of us here are already like awakened to all this. We've let go of that a long time ago, but where in our lives do we have family members or careers or jobs or relationships that are still holding on to some of that, that we feel an empathic connection to that we need to sort of release ourselves from. So the crisis is hitting everybody in a different way. And where that's taking people into sort of this plutonic um, cycle is where um, we're waking up to this Uranus Taurus, which is also facing the uncertainties of the financial world and this total global reset and just where currency and security is not what it used to be. And where more self-reliance is, need, uh, is needing to come in in order to find a deeper sense of abundance in connection with nature, in connection with Mother Earth, in connection with building community and pooling our resources together that are no longer dependent on, you know, a system that uh, is sort of an artificial replica of what these initiations um, present. So as we see with the global reset, the QR codes, 15-minute cities, the climate change globalist agenda, um, the uh, agenda 2030, and all the different things that they're, you know, kind of pushing on us. You know, this is sort of the the trajectory of these initiations that are not initiations, but the total loss of discernment that um, these planetary forces are helping us to remove ourselves from. And if we can just breathe through it and help each other through it, then the panic alarm and the survival chakra won't be so lit up to just always have to answer to something outside of ourselves. And so we're really moving through so much. 
And the programming's run so deep that even if you feel completely awake, and even if you don't even feel religious, some of those programmings are just still operating, you know, within ourselves more than maybe we realize. And so I'm going to take a lot of like Q and A's. Um, and when I work with you one-on-one, -on -one, you we can really pay attention to where is this hitting you in your own personal life, in your personal relationships, relationship with family. Are you wanting to take a next step? Where do you feel stuck? Where do you feel held back? Because as these energies get real strong and they already are, but when we move into just the need to, you know, really uh, be standing up for ourselves and being true to ourselves, um, you know, where is this hitting you in your natal chart? Where are your North and South? No, because this is really, you know, based in, um, the deeper like soul journey and what our real calling is and what our purpose is to pay attention to these greater growth peers. Cause we're really here for soul development and spiritual development. And uh, we want to avoid hijacking and, and all that as best as we can. So my cursor is like not here. Where is it? So I can move it out of the way. So talking about Pluto moving into Aquarius the last time that Pluto moved through Aquarius was from 1778 to 1798. And all sorts of events took place that represented liberation. The Bill of Rights was penned during this period. And during this time, it was clear that equality and individual freedoms people were standing up for. And in 1778, the state of Virginia was the first state to abolish slavery. And like I was talking about, Uranus has been in the sign of Taurus, conjunct the North Node in Taurus for quite some time. And now it's further away, but we're still experiencing it in both, um, you know, the energies of, you know, Taurus, because if you have any Taurus energies or the fact that Uranus is going to be in Taurus for a while, I mean, we're, we're still experiencing this. Pluto going into Aquarius with Uranus ruling Aquarius really brings those energies together. Pluto eighth house is opposite Taurus second house in the chart. So this integration of polarity and what we've been processing through is what do we ne need to let go of in order to awaken fully to our sovereign self in connection with the trajectory of organic ascension versus um, reflecting upon the scorpionic energy in fear of death and emerging in a problem reaction solution tactic that would further compromise us and lead us into more transhumanism and assimilation into AI because the shadow side of Uranus has to do with dark technology. So again, with their knowledge of these planetary alignments, there's always a way to harness the darker shadow sides of those things that target the negative ego and the unprocessed traumas and the fears and the lower chakra energies to keep us dependent on this um, inverted matrix that many of us know is really going nowhere. So I know a lot of you already know this already and are living this and doing the best that you can with the times that we're in, but it's just good to know, you know, you know, what's happening. And I know that everybody where you're living, you're seeing this, it's right under all of our noses. So I, I, I sure this is kind of a diverse group of people that are different stages of where they're at in their life and experiencing different things based on the location that you live as well. But um, it's, it's just, no matter where we're at, it's, this is not easy stuff to navigate. I would definitely like say, and I'm definitely going through it big time. Um, and yeah, it's like, I'm about to put my book out. So everything's coming up as far as, whoa, what are my family going to think? And just, you know, and so the great initiation, at least for me, is just letting go of all of that because, you know, we got to stand strong and be true to who we are because uh, it's, it's, it's up to us to create the change and not just sit by and witness um all of this we, we just got to live our truth and that's what this nodal growth period has been all about with the south node scorpio north node taurus now moving into aries now it's like time to take action now it's time to stand up for ourselves and i'll talk about the nodes a little bit more but um this is what we're being called to initiate 
Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So I really truly feel that as Pluto moves into Aquarius, it'll help us to release and let go of anything that we're struggling to let go of. It will be helpful for us to transform our beliefs about what these trying times are bringing up in us. Pluto takes us into a bit of a dark night of the soul as the initiation into a, the new sign begins, but breathe through it and connect with the mother earth and the purging mourning and release of old paradigm energies that is dying. And, uh, and it wants us to take us down with it. And people are holding onto it like a security blanket. You know, it's, it's like that fear of letting go, like something else that's greater isn't going to be there to catch you. And this is where it's really infiltrated religions and just the authority of the world and all these different power structures that have just really created this unhealthy um, relationship that is not the true mother, father, creator guidance that exists within us. That is what creation is made of, that is embedded and encoded in the planetary grid network and our DNA. So there is a major cleansing going on. Activations from Uranus in the earth element, Taurus and the Pluto into Aquarius will help lift people into the kind of thinking that goes beyond the matrix. If they can just let go of fear and being controlled by the anxiety, which often causes people to give their power away and be in fight or flight. Remember, Uranus upgrades us and can set us free from all the frequency modulations and false narratives that will continue to put people in a vulnerable place. And we must access fully the higher mind, embody it as a way of life and not just know it, but like fully live it. Uranus is a truth frequency. And that is where the initiations are taking us. But it also just is a force that feels like it's beyond our control and can completely uproot us. It's the planet of shock and upheaval. And to me, it's the tower card in the tarot, but it's like that, that great, you know, kind of awakening. And if we don't move through the initiations and the discomfort, and we're just in the reaction of how it impacts our nervous system, you know, just, just with anxiety, if we don't give it a voice, if we don't give a voice to the things that are coming in that we don't even might realize are coming in, you know, it can really be hard on our nervous system because the physical body is, you know, moving, wanting to move forward as these strong activations are taking place. It wants to like clear itself of wherever it's still holding on. And, you know, the physical body, you know, can have a really, really tough time um, on a nervous system level with it being in an earth sign, which means now it's time to ground the higher mind into the physical. This is the integration process. And this is what that South node um, Scorpio is helping us to dump anything that's getting in the way. We can reflect upon that, but we don't want to stew in that. We want to move forward and integrate into that earth energy and be that higher vibration and expression of higher earth energy. Doing all that inner work and purification and purging is the key um, to doing all of that. And so Saturn and Pisces is retrograde also. And so that's helping us to let go of where do we hold on to belief systems that keep us oppressed, that keep us repressed, that trigger us into hearing an old voice of authority that feels punishing or tells us no, or you can't do that, or that's impossible. A lot of religious programmings I think are coming up for people, even if they feel that they're not there, it just might still be coming up because it's just uh just been a huge part of people's family backgrounds or even you know past lives and um so everything that's happening on a planetary level is helping to break all that down throw it into the abyss and and allow yourself to sort of let that death process complete itself so that you can rise in the higher vibration of your truth and authenticity and so going from the Taurus North node of really reclaiming your self-worth on your own terms into the Aries, which is asking for us to be in the I am creator self. Now, what am I going to do with it? Now it's time to take action. And so I'll talk about what that means, though, to have a South node Libra, because that's what we're going to be reflecting upon as a humanity. And where that hits us in our own chart is where we're going to be working those kind of energies so anyway, Saturn in Pisces is retrograde with Pluto right now. So we're really up against generational patterns of authority and spirituality and what it means for us, what works and what doesn't. Pluto retrograde is being sure to dredge up anything that needs releasing. 